So the next thing we're going to talk about today and the last thing in today's lecture and in this chapter is something called the liquidity trap. And understanding the liquidity trap is very straightforward. We start off with a question is why does the government engage in open market operations? And the answer is simple. It's when the government engage in open market operation, they can change the money supply in the economy, increase or decrease how much money is available. So the next question is, why does the government want to change the money supply in the economy? What do they hope to achieve through it? And we've already seen this graphically, is that when the government is increasing or decreasing the money supply in the economy, what they're trying to do is to change the interest rate in the economy. So effectively, the government engage in OMO, open market operations, to change the interest rate in the economy. So this is called monetary policy, which is a, effectively whenever the government is engaging in open market operation to change the rate of interest in the economy, that is known as the government's monetary policy. Uh, monetary policy isn't really important in this chapter, and we're not really going to talk about it, but we have dedicated chapters coming up later in the course, which is just about the monetary policy because it is very important and it is one of the two tools that the government have in trying to regulate the economy, let's say. But for now, let's go back to what we were talking about. So basically what we have established is that whenever the government engage in open market operations, basically buying and selling bonds, what they're trying to do is change the interest rate in the economy. Okay, so that brings us to the third and the important question is that by changing the money, the money supply as much as they want, can government reach any level of interest? And the question here initially might seem like, yes, they can. If government want to lower the interest rate, they can simply increase the money supply. If government want to increase the interest rate, they can simply decrease the money supply. But the reality is a bit more complex. And there are certain levels of interest that the government may just not be able to reach. And we're going to look at that very quickly, why and what these interest rates are. But before that, let's once again, very quickly review, why is it that, uh, and why is it that an increase in money supply changes the interest rate? And so let's go back to the very first thing we had talked about in financial market, which is that we have two types of financial asset. One is money and one is bond. And primarily, the difference between the two is that bonds pay us an interest and money does not pay an interest. So effectively, at a first glance, it would look like we want to hold all our asset as bond because then we earn some interest. But if we hold anything in money, we don't really earn anything. The reason we still hold money is because it's more convenient. We can't pay for things using bonds. And so depending on how much transaction we expect to have, and of course, how much the interest rate is, we decide on an optimum level of money and bonds. So for example, I have less than 10% of what I have in money and the other 90% I hold as, well, not bonds, other financial assets, but obviously we've simplified our example. So let's say bond. 90% of what I have are held as bonds. That's earning me an interest. And other 10% I have as money. 
Now, what would make me change my decision? Mm, suppose my, the number of the volume of my transactions are going to go up. In the coming months, I expect to be buying a lot of things, spending a lot of money. So what I will want to do is increase how much money I'm holding and decrease how much bond I have. And that will make things more convenient for me. And the reverse is also true. If I expect my volume of transactions to go down in the coming months, I'm going to reduce how much money I hold and increase my bond, bond holding. Uh, the other thing that will change this composition is the interest rate. So if the interest rate were to go up on bonds, what I'm going to decide to do is not buy so many things, have less of my asset as cash, as currency, and put more of my assets as bonds because interest rate is very high and I want to be earning this high interest. Conversely, if interest rates fall by a lot, I'll just decide not to hold that much bond because it's not very profitable. Okay, so coming back to the original question, why does an increase in money supply affect the interest rate? That's because we're making an optimizing decision. So let's take the example of money supply increasing. How does the money supply increase? When the government is buying bonds. Effectively, the government is, uh, when government buys bonds, effectively the government is giving us money for that bond and that is injecting money into the economy. But remember what we have talked about in the last lecture is that when government is buying bonds, they're increasing the demand for bonds. And when they do that, price level of the bonds go up. When price of bonds go up, that effectively means that interest rate on bonds have fallen. Because interest rate on bonds have fallen, I'm willing to hold more cash and less bonds. And as a result, I'm willing to sell some of the bonds that I'm holding to the government in return for cash. Is that clear to everyone? Let me talk about the opposite scenario of decreasing money supply. Why will a decrease in money supply increase the interest rate? So think about this again. How does the government decrease the money supply? They do so by selling bonds. When the government sell bonds, they give the people bonds in return of cash. So the government is taking money from the people and that immediately means that there is less money supply in the economy. But why will people be willing to make this transaction? That is because when the government is selling bonds, they're increasing the supply of bonds in the economy. And when you increase the supply of anything, what that means is that price is going down. When price of bonds are falling, once again, remember what we have already seen uh, in the last lecture is that when the price of bonds are going down, that means that interest rate is going up. When interest rate on bonds have gone up, you're willing to hold more bonds and less cash. And that is why when the government is trying to sell you bonds, you're willing to accept that bond from the government and give them money. Okay. And that is effectively how a change in the monetary, uh, not monetary, a change in the money supply in the economy affects the, the interest rate. Okay, now let me draw this diagram. The same diagram that we have seen in the last lecture. So over here we have M, which is money. Over here we have I. Let me draw. This is the money demand line. And this 
is money supply. And what we have is an equilibrium here. So suppose this is I1, this is M1, okay. So let's think about the government increasing the money supply. The government wants to reduce the interest rate in the economy. So what they decide to do is engage in open market operations and increase the money supply. So suppose we are at MS Prime and mission accomplished, you might say. The government has increased the money supply from M1 to M2. And as a result, interest rates have fallen from I1 to I2. Okay, so let me just extend this line a little bit. We're going to need that. So something like this. So this is what the money demand looks like. I apologize for the appalling diagram, but you guys all have the ebook, so you can refer to that. So here's, here's the thing. Uh, let's go back to the original position we were at E. And from the point E, the government can both increase interest rate or decrease interest rate. So for example, if they wanted to increase interest rate, all they would have to do is decrease the money supply and that would immediately increase the interest rate. This much is straightforward, easy to understand. We've already done that in the next lecture. The liquidity trap, happens beyond M2. Suppose the government is not happy with this point where interest rate is I2. Suppose the government decides that the interest rate needs to be lower, much lower. So what do they decide to do? Increase the money supply even more. So they do this, and this prime prime. But what has happened? interest rate hasn't really fallen. The government increased the money supply even more, but the interest rate still hasn't fallen. You see, because once the demand curve becomes flat, increasing money supply is no longer going to reduce the interest rate. So there is a lower bound on how low interest rate can go in the economy. And beyond that, the government can do nothing. And that is called the liquidity trap. Effectively, I mean, if you guys have done any finance course, you already know what liquidity means. Uh, in a very simple sense, this is not an accurate definition, but let's just say liquidity means cash. And you have very high liquidity when you have a lot of cash. And the liquidity trap occurs when there's too much money in the economy. And because there is too much money in the economy, what happens is that government can no longer uh, effectively lower the interest rate. Mm. So the question I suppose is why? I mean, graphically we can see why. It's pretty easy to understand what's happening, but let's talk more about the mechanism, the real world explanation. Why is, or what is the theoretical explanation behind the phenomenon of liquidity trap? 